We are on the resources page of the Notion Press website. The first thing you need to do to set up the interior design of the book is to decide the book size. This decision is based on the genre and the number of words in your book. If yours is a fiction book with less than 1 lakh words, you can go in for a 5x8 or 5.5x8.5 book size. If you have more than 1 lakh words, it will probably be better to go for the 6x9. For a non-fiction book, you can choose a 5.5x8.5 or 6x9. For academic books, 8.5x11. And for children's books and cookbooks with images and illustrations, 8.5x8.5. In this video, I'm going to set up the book The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Duma in 5x8 size. I'm going to download the template from here. The download package will contain a reference guide and the interior design template. Let's extract these two files. If you have any doubts while setting up the book, the reference guide would be able to help you. Let's go through the template first. Before we start setting up the book, let's go over some of the basics you need to know. The interior of every book can be broadly classified into three. Front matter, body text and end matter. The front matter consists of sections like the dedication, preface, foreword, acknowledgements and so on. The body text consists of the chapters and part pages in the book and the end matter consists of sections like the epilogue, references, index, etc. Each of these three parts has different styles for their headers and page numbers. Pages in which a new chapter starts won't have headers or page numbers, as you can see here. In the front matter, page numbers are usually Roman numerals and headers are the name of the chapter. But since the page in which the new section starts would not have a header or page number, the header and page numbers are given only in the subsequent pages of the section. In the body text, a left side page would have the book title as a header and a right side page would have the author name as a header. The page numbers begin on the first page itself but would be shown only on the second page. In the end matter, Headers are similar to the front matter, which is the name of the section. The page numbers are continuous from the body text. It's possible to have these many different header and page number styles in the same document because of a feature in Microsoft Word. When we start a section with a new header or page number style, it has to be delinked from the previous section of the document. This can be done by double clicking inside the header section and removing the link to previous option which can be found here. As you can see in this page, the link has been removed from the previous section of the document. Another aspect you need to be familiar with is the styles gallery in Microsoft Word. You can apply a particular style to a part of the text in the document and reuse it for other sections using this feature. Here we can see that the main heading has a particular style and it has been named as Heading 1 and saved in the Styles Gallery. It can be reused for all other chapter headings in the book. We've created other styles for second level headings, third level headings, body text and so on. It's also important to know how to insert breaks in the document. To format a book properly without any errors, we should not use enters to add space in a page. Different types of breaks can be found in the page layout menu. To start a new page on the next right hand side of the book, you can use an odd page break. All new sections in a book start on the right hand side, so this break is very useful while formatting the book. To start a page on the next left hand side of the book, you can use an even page break. We've already added the required page breaks in the appropriate places in this template but you will need to add new breaks if you would like to add new sections in the book. You can view the breaks that are already in the book by turning on the paragraph sign which can be found in the home menu. You can see the odd page break here, before, right before the epilogue. I'm going to turn off this sign for now. Let's now start setting up the book.
The first page in the template is called the title page. This page has a book title, subtitle, author name and publisher name. You can replace this text with the actual text of the book and apply the appropriate style from the styles gallery. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to replace that text with the actual title of the book. And apply the book title style. Next, the subtitle. And apply the subtitle style. Replace the author name. And apply the author name style. That's it. The second page, which appears on the left-hand side of the printed book, is a copyright page. You don't need to make any changes in this page. Now, if your book does not have some of the front matter we've included here, you can delete those pages. This book has a preface, so I'm going to retain that alone and remove the other front matter sections. I'm going to remove the dedication page, retain the contents page for later. I'll remove the forward, retain the preface, and remove the acknowledgements and prologue. Going back to the preface. If you look at the formatting here, you can see that the first paragraph is a flush left alignment, and all subsequent paragraphs have a slight indent. This style has been used by most international publishers to make the text more readable. So we've created a style with the first paragraph with all sections and named it Normal Without Indent. And another style for all the subsequent paragraphs and named it Normal Indent. We have to retain this style when we copy the text from the actual manuscript into the template. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's delete this text first. And let's copy the preface into the template. Go back to the first paragraph and give it this style, normal without indent. Select all the subsequent paragraphs, give it this style, normal indent. As simple as that. Now, moving on to the first chapter. We have to repeat the same exercise here. We'll start by copying the heading. Applying the style, heading 1. Let's delete this text. Copy the text from the first chapter. Paste it. Go back to the first paragraph. Apply the style normal without indent. Select all the subsequent paragraphs in the same chapter. And apply the style normal indent. When you go through the first chapter, you can see that there's a footnote in this page. We can move this footnote in to the bottom of the page by using a feature in Microsoft Word. Place your cursor right next to the text where the citation number should be added. Go to the References tab and click on Insert Footnote. You can see that the citation number has been added here and that a footnote section has been opened up at the bottom of the page. Let's move this text to the footnote section. Let's also get rid of the asterisk marks because the citation numbers have been added back. 
that's it now if you want to add more footnotes you can do that by following the same process and the citation numbers will appear sequentially another thing we have to do in the body text is change the headers you have to replace these with the actual book title and author name all you have to do is double click inside the header section and replace the text And that's it. The headers will change automatically in all the other pages of the body text. The remaining chapters can be formatted in the same manner as we did for the first chapter. I'm going to fast forward to the epilogue of this book. I'm going to follow the same process I did for the earlier portions. Let's delete this text. And paste the actual epilogue from the book. Go back to the first paragraph and apply the style normal without indent. Select all the subsequent paragraphs and apply the style normal indent. And that's it. Now once all the parts of the book have been set up, we can go to the table of contents and update it. Let's delete this text. Right click inside the contents field and click on update field. This automatically updates the contents page with the current headings in the document. We've used the font Gandhi Serif for normal font and Gaspar for headings. So let's change this font also to Gandhi Serif. That's it. Now, to convert this into a print-ready PDF, all you have to do is save it as a PDF. You can do that by going to the file menu, click on save as, select PDF from the drop down menu and click save. This is the print ready PDF that has been created for the book. Now if you see it in two page view and you choose the option show cover page in two page view, you can view the book as how it would appear in print. You can see that all the new sections have started on the right hand side. So this is how you can use the interior design template to create the print ready PDF of your book. If you have any questions while using the template, you can get in touch with our support team and we'd be happy to help. Thank you for watching.